the ships of millions and trillions of years, he who made time, the seed of the universe. He's known among the ancient Kemites or Egyptians as Amun-Ra and Aten, among the Hebrews as Ansaf, Yahweh, Elohim, among the Christians as Lord, God, and Jehovah, among the Muslims in the Islamic world as Allah, the one God, among the Rastafarians as Jah, Rastafarian, among the Yoruba tribe as Olodumare, Obatala, Oshun, and many other Orisha gods, but I bear witness that all of those names refer to the same one, the Almighty God. And it is to him whom I give reverence and to whom I submit. All right. Again, I welcome everyone that's out. I know it's a little chilly out here, but we're going to get this thing rolling, doing the things that we came to do. Um, Maya, would you get that phone from Ebony, please? Won't you all understand why we are I want you all to understand why we are out here. And we won't be long, all right? But I'm, I'm glad to see you all. And uh, I know some of us are victims of gun violence or know someone who's been a victim of gun violence. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, when you try to talk about, you know, not really just laying the guns down per se, but more so, you know, we dealing with a flood, right? Everybody in here drink water, right? And you love it, right? But what if it was a flood? Wouldn't be too happy then, would you? Okay, so I'm not telling everybody to put their guns away, those who have those cards and the concealed and carry and whatnot. You good. We're talking about that flood of guns that are in our community. These type of guns that I call Quick kill, automatic, automatic weapons of mass destruction. Y'all know what I mean? Amen. The ones when you shoot and just pull the trigger one time and you get 30 shots out of just one pull. That's quick kill, automatic weapon of mass destruction. Do we need that in our community? No, no. sir. Not at all. And we're here not only to just talk about it, but to expose some of the people who are responsible for it, and we're gonna use the term alleged. See, you know, they say allegations and alleged. So when you do say names, see, we understand this, you all, in the Temple of Mercy Association. Everybody who we come to and trust, most of the people we come to and trust, some of our politicians, some of our neighbors, are involved in this proliferation of guns in our community. Now, a lot of people don't want to admit that. And, 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 and you telling me that at all this killing, nobody knows who's doing it? Nobody. That's a lie. Somebody know. And that's why we're here, because we are not going to be looking for who did the shooting. We want to deal with who sold those quick kill weapons of mass destruction. Harry Belafonte, who all heard of Harry Belafonte? Let me read what he said at the NAACP Awards in February 18, 2013. He was talking to a bunch of celebrities. At that time, he was 85 years old, and he just made his transition at 95 just recently. He said that the group that's most devastated by America's obsession with the gun is the African Americans. We, America has the largest prison population in the world, and of the over two million men, women, and children who make up the incarcerated, the overwhelming majority are black. Out of two million, the majority in prison is us. We the most unemployed, we are the most caught in the unjust system of justice, and guess what, y'all? In the gun game, we are the most haunted. Now that's just sending a chill through your body. 
he's there at the NAACP talking to all the celebrities and he's saying that he knows that in this gun game we are the most hunted then he went on to say the river of blood that washes the streets of our nation flows mostly from the bodies of our black children yet as the great debate emerges on the question of the gun, white America discussed the Constitution issue of ownership, while no one speaks of the consequences of our racial carnage. The question is raised in black America. Why are we mute? Why are we so silent? Why? Where are our leaders? Where are our legislators? Where is the church? Those are good questions, aren't they? I don't believe we see enough people out here addressing this gun violence. And not enough of us. We have our brother, brother Lionel uh, Muhammad here, brother minister Lionel Muhammad. He has a prison ministry. He deals with those in and those that are coming out. And he has a story he can tell you. That brother there, he's been on the wall, on the line, holding the tow line. For how many years, sir? 23. 23 years. And he's helped so many brothers and sisters, but that's just one man. I'm just one man. How many of you all out here know of anyone that was a victim of gun violence? How many of us know somebody that's a victim of gun violence? Everybody? Mm -hmm. I have a cousin on the east side shot in the head. He was 18, so I, I, I know a few. And so I'm saying that's why we should be concerned. All of us need to be concerned. Some people talk about economics. They say we should be dealing with economics, economics. You ever looked at these bullets? These bullets look like little missiles being shot and fired. Those little long ones like that look like little miniature rockets being fired. We walking around in the community, but we want to grow economically, but we dodging bullets and gunfire. We're at war in our own communities. We should not be in a position to where we one day will be at a restaurant or be walking down the street and all of a sudden we hear some shooting and then we stop our conversation and duck. And then when it stops, we finish the conversation that we had. Why is that? That's because we learn to live with it. We learn to live with it, and we don't have to live with it. I'm going to come back and I'm going to share with you all solutions. Solutions. But even if I share the solution, if it's not being worked on and, and, and we're not doing what the solution says, it's just a conversation. Come on now. Come on now. We want to see change. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Then we got to come back to the village concept, and that's what I'm going to bring back. So next on here is for me to introduce the person that let us have this place. Look at it, it's big, ain't it? Yes, yes, yes. The pastor who owns this lot and this church, Pastor Willie Riley. Give it up for y'all. Yeah. Would you like to say a little something? Oh, okay. Willie Riley Jr. coming up. Give it up for him. All right. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, everybody. Yeah. If you love Jesus, make some noise. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're just truly thanking and praising God to be a part of this for this day that He's all given us, right? Blessed us with the breath of life, a new beginning. Giving honor to our pastor, our shepherd, Pastor Willie James Riley Sr. We bring you um, presents from the Center of Hope Ministries. We just part, um, just happy to be a part of this on today. And, um, you know, we feel it's very important. You know, um, our family personally was a uh, victim of uh, gun violence. My brother, Jason, yeah. Yeah. Um, second oldest to pastor, um, died in 07. Rest in peace, rest in paradise, Jay Riles, and um, 
you know, it's just very important that we stand for our righteousness and we stand against uh, gun violence. Amen? Amen. Because God brings peace and, 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 and it's um, numbers in unity, right? It's numbers in groups and it's in unity. So we just thank God to be out here for this opportunity, even though it's cold. Hey, we, we warmed up. And let the Holy Spirit inside of us keep us warmed up, right? Because we're doing something positive and, and whether the people come or not, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? We, we're, we're doing it peacefully and lovefully. And um, like I said, I just thank God to be able to be a part of this. And um, let's give God some praise. Amen.